Welcome, Soul Visionaries. I am your host, Sherrod Cohen, and you are now entering the Soul Vision Powercast, a place where we keep it unfiltered and raw. We discuss anything from porn to politics. <laughs> Shit, we'll even discuss anything you heard or saw. Today, we're going to talk about 12 signs your marriage is over. The fairy tale is done. So, without further ado, yo, let's kick it. 12 signs your marriage is over. Over. You know, I was married, divorced now, so I'm going to see if what was a part of my marriage and its failures, and its failure, I want to see if, if, they're, if they're right. I want to see if the signs were there. You know, are they pointing out the signs that, that I had when my shit was over with? Okay. This article is being taken by Sylvia Smith. It's uh, 12 signs your marriage may be over. Has your fairy tale marriage turned into a toxic relationship? Here are 12 signs your marriage may be over. Now, article starts off by saying, by asking, feeling trapped or unfulfilled in your marriage is one of the worst things you can have. After all, who expects to go into a marriage expecting to be unhappy? The person that goes in expecting to be unhappy is the motherfucker that goes in well, for the wrong reason in the first place. So if you go into a marriage for anything other than just loving that individual, whether it be because you had children with them or because you're trying to get the bag from them or anything other than love, just expect your shit to fall apart more sooner than later. Feeling disrespected or disconnected from your partner is a miserable way to live. But whether you've been married for two years or 20, deciding to get a divorce is not an easy decision. Common relationship problems occur in even the happiest of marriages. But if your simple disagreements have turned into resentment and contempt, it may be a sign that your marriage is on the rocks. Has your fairy tale marriage turned into a toxic relationship? Here are 12 signs. Your marriage is over. Number one, you are no longer friends. And sometimes you motherfuckers never were friends. Y'all using each other for something. But number one, you are no longer friends. Healthy couples are friends as well as lovers. Homie lover friends by the boy R. Kelly. Anyway, you are no longer friends. Healthy couples are friends as well as lovers. The emotional intimacy and ability to have fun together outside of romance is what will keep the marriage strong during times when sex isn't as prevalent in the relationship. If you and your spouse never hang out together as friends and feel awkward doing things socially, it could mean that your marriage isn't as strong as it should be. Well, for you motherfuckers that's in, in your marriage for the wrong reason, y'all are not friends. Your shit might be on the way out. Number two, your spouse stresses you out. Does the thought of being around your partner for the evening fill you with anxiety? Do you find yourself looking for excuses not to hang out or include them in your social plans? Feeling stress or anxiety at the thought of emotional or physical intimacy with your partner is a big sign that your marriage is on thin ice. Thin ice. And a lot of times that shit did not just happen. It was like that already. You, you didn't like that, that joker anyway. You was repulsed by him, but you still got with him because he got that bread. That bread. I'm telling you, fellas. You know, some of y'all are just the bad guy here. And ladies, some of y'all are just married because the dude had a kid with you. So listen to these these 12 joints, you know, and, and, and see if this is, is this is a part of your relationship. Number three, you don't communicate. Now, number three, you don't communicate. A lack of communication is one of the biggest signs of an unhappy marriage. Couples who communicate learn how to read each other and resolve conflict respectfully. On the other hand, a lack of communication between partners can lead to misunderstandings and hurt feelings. When you can't communicate, arguments stop being about solving a problem and turn into shouting matches and intimacy dies off. The thing with communication, communication has to be the number one thing that you all have developed in the relationship before you even get truly serious. 
if you can't talk about any and everything in a relationship, I don't care if it's a romantic relationship or a business relationship. If you all can't discuss anything and, and, and do so or in, and disagree in a mature way, I mean, y'all shouldn't even be messing around with each other. Number four, there is no compromise in your marriage. Compromising with your spouse means that you meet in the middle to make a situation work. You should look to compromise anytime you want to strike a balance in your life. Without compromise, you will experience common relationship problems because a lack of compromise means you don't respect the other's feelings or opinion. And without respect, your marriage is doomed. Man, when I watch HGTV and I see these couples on here, and I watch the, I watch the woman tell a man that he can't have a man cave or he can't have a space to himself to himself. Or when I see those two talk about, um, you know, one, one may have a budget of 800,000. The other one says, you know, no, the, the wife will say, no, our budget is a million dollars. You know, damn what he says. That's that shit right there, bro. Y'all, y'all go for this shit, man. And, 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 and don't correct it. You know, when you see it from the beginning, you have to correct these behaviors from the get go. As soon as you notice this shit happening, you have to put your foot down. Ladies, you too. If you're feeling disrespected in your relationship, the moment you feel disrespected, the moment you feel disrespected. Let me do that shit again. The moment you feel disrespected, man, you got to put your foot down. You got to holler at him or her and let that shit be known. We ain't having that. Number five. You're already living like you're single. Ooh. Let me read that again. Let me rewind. I'm going to rewind that shit. You're already living like you're single. Spouses who are in love treat each other as partners. They want to spend time together. They consult each other before making big decisions, and they communicate. If you are living like you are single and acting like you have no responsibility toward your spouse, it's clear that your marriage needs intervention intervention man y'all probably just need to just cut that shit loose because a lot of these signs a lot of these things they don't just happen overnight a lot of this shit is this shit was it already existed man before y'all even walk down the aisle a lot of y'all think that if we get married a lot of these problems are going to go away no this shit going to intensify brothers once you get married you lose everything. You can't, you really can't control what you think you control because once you get married, your bank account, your access to your children, that shit is out the window if she wants it to be. So think about that. I'm not telling you don't get married. I'm not saying marriage is not a good thing. You know, you just have to be careful about who you marry and you have to be careful that they are in it to win it just like you are. And when you go into a marriage and you got a woman, hey, make sure you're in it to win it. Make sure you're, you're not there to disrupt her happiness and make sure she's not there to disrupt your, you guys' happiness. You're not responsible for each other's happiness, but you are responsible for not fucking up each other's peace in the crib. Number six. Therapy ain't working. Therapy ain't working. I don't know, no matter how many therapists you talk to, the shit ain't working. Common relationship problems often lead couples to go to counseling. But even the best intentions may leave you and your spouse feeling resentful and frustrated. If you love your spouse but just can't seem to get along no matter what you do, it may be a sign that your marriage is crashing to a halt. And you can still love a person and, and just not you know, get along. That's just, that's just a part of life, man. Just because you don't get along with a person, that don't mean they're not a good person. You know, two good people can come together and it should not work. It don't mean that they're not good people. They're just not good for each other. Walk away like adults, mature adults, and then go find somebody else to fuck with. Number seven, you are no longer intimate. Ooh, we no longer intimate. Mm, mm, mm. Sex may not be everything, but it is an important part of a healthy relationship. I'm going to read that again because some of y'all women be out here on some bullshit. Sex may not be everything, but it is an important part of a healthy relationship. 
Sex helps you and your partner bond by releasing a chemical called oxy, uh, oxytoxin or oxytoxin and oxytoxin in your body. Hey, I fucked that word up. My bad. Oxytoxin in your body. Not only does this promote feelings of love, but it also acts as a natural stress reliever. You got to get that bang, bang in there, man, to relieve some of that stress. Because some of y'all women walking around here, yeah, y'all got a purse full of money. Y'all got degrees up the ass. But, man, y'all stress level way up here. They got y'all wearing these fake little lashes, hairline receding, eyelashes big. Y'all stressed out. Y'all need to get that back taken care of. If you've been married for a while, it's natural for your sex life to find a more stable rhythm than you had when you were first together. But if you are, let me, let me read that again. If you've been married for a while, it's natural for your sex life to find a more stable rhythm than you had when you were first together. But if you are in a sexless relationship, unattracted to your partner, rarely find yourself doing the deed, feel repelled by the idea of being intimate together, (sighs) these are glaring signs that you are in an unhappy marriage. I don't know how y'all torture yourself by staying married to somebody that that ain't giving them no ass or no no nothing. You can't get no nookie, you know. But I understand some some of y'all are staying in the marriage because, like for for men, uh, men, trust me, a lot of men out there, if they were given the option to say, you know what, if you could leave your, if you leave your wife today, you can still have access to your children and keep all your money, man, the divorce rate will be off the fucking charts. Hey, women, quite sure, if you could just walk away with all this cash, some of y'all would be boning out too, quick, fast, in a hurry. Number eight. You can imagine you or your spouse in other relationships. Let me read that shit again. You can imagine you or your spouse in other relationships. When you are deeply in love with someone, the very thought of that person being emotionally or physically intimate with someone else might make your stomach turn. But when you're unhappy in your marriage, you can imagine your partner with someone else without even flinching. Eh, Who gives a fuck? Daydreaming about your partner or yourself being with someone new is a clear sign that you are already visualizing a way out of your marriage. I got kind of an issue with that because number eight is not, I I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say that I don't care about it for, for me. It's not, it's, it's not my coochie. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't own it. She can give it to whomever she want, you know, it's his free will. You know, we, we're just, we're just right now, we, you know, being married is not a, a, a guaranteed contract. It's not a bond that nobody will step out the marriage, you know, so you can only go by a person's word. So I don't know. Number eight about imagining, you know, somebody else being with somebody else. And I don't know that, that I think number eight is some bullshit. But anyway, let's go on to number nine. You want different things out of life. Now, these are things you should discuss in the beginning. These are things you should frequently discuss because as we grow, we learn and we want different things out of life. Sometimes we grow together. Sometimes we grow apart, grow apart. Communication is an important cornerstone of marriage. When couples don't communicate while they're dating, they may run into serious problems while they are married. One of the most common relationship problems is disagreeing about future goals. You may be married, but disagreeing about your lifestyle, where you want to live, or whether or not you want to start a family can mean serious setbacks ahead. You know, just say, just say, for instance, getting a marriage and one of you, y'all both decided that y'all didn't want kids. But then one of y'all get baby fever, you know, saying you, you want a child, you want to leave a, a legacy, you, you, you know, you won't have somebody to carry on the name or whatever, and the other person doesn't. What do you do then? Do you just, do you say, oh, no, nah, I'll stay in the marriage despite that, or do you go your separate ways because you want a child and they don't? 
Number 10, an affair is on your mind. One of the biggest signs that you want out of your marriage is if you have begun having an affair. Whether it's deeply emotional, a deeply emotional affair or physical cheating. Sharing an intimate life with someone outside your marriage may be a sign that something isn't right at home. Yeah, that could be, that, that's, that's somewhat true, but at the same time, hey, home could be the bomb. Home could be everything that you want it to be, but if you see something on the outside that tempts you that much, well, let's say tempt your tummy with the taste of nuts and honey, if it does that, then you step out. That don't mean you don't love home. It just means you saw something that you thought was worth almost losing your shit over. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So that's another topic, man, for another, another time because you can fall in love with more than one person. You can. We ain't going dis- to You can. Hit me in the comment section below if you want to, but you can fall in love with more than one person. Number 11. Your goals don't include your spouse. Ooh, ooh. Do you have big plans for the future? Maybe you want to move somewhere new or change careers, but can't because of circumstances having to do with your partner. Pursuing such goals, even though being with your partner would make them unattainable, is a clear sign you no longer want to be married. Man, isn't that something to just think of what you want to do business ideas or, you know, places you want to live. And as you're imagining all these things, your partner's face is nowhere in any other scenarios. Can you imagine being that one who's in love with a partner that doesn't see the future, their a future with you? You know, just imagine this dude or this woman thinking about just all these big plans and this and that and the other but they never discuss those plans with you. They discuss them with everyone else. You get left on the, you know, on the outside and shit, like you're an outsider. Better watch, you better communicate early on in your relationships. Communication, communication, communication. Number 12, last but not least, you don't feel like yourself anymore. Do hobbies that once used to fulfill you now fill you with melancholy, uh, with melancholy? Are you distant from your friends and loved ones? If so, you may be having a personality crisis. When you first got married, you probably had a good idea of who you were or who you wanted to be. But living in an unhappy marriage has stripped you of your personality. This can leave you feeling lost. That may be a sign that it's time to end your relationship. These reasons for divorce may seem like nothing more than common relationship problems, but if you have marked off two or more of the points listed above, your marriage may be in serious trouble. I'm telling you, I, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, can, I can see a couple of these signs that was a part of my marriage. One, you are no longer friends. Two, your spouse stresses you the fuck out. You don't even want to see the ass. You, you hanging out with your partners. It's like one, two o'clock in the morning, and you trying to find other places to go besides to the crib. You don't communicate. That's that's one of them things where, hey. Even the sound of their voice irks the shit out you. Number four, there is no compromise in a marriage. That person or you want everything your way. It's, it's no give and take. It's, it's just give, 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 and they take, 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 or vice versa. Number five, you're already living like you're single. So, hey, whenever your partner goes out, whenever you go out, y'all always go y'all separate ways. Family gatherings for the holiday, y'all go y'all separate ways. No matter what it is you do, y'all go y'all separate ways. Number six, therapy isn't working. No matter how much you talk to these folks that's supposed to have the big brains to know whatever it is your problem is and how to solve them, no matter how many times you speak to these folks, you still have the same issue because guess what? Neither one of you all may have went in or even one of y'all may have not gone in with the intention on actually solving that shit because in y'all mind, y'all shit was over with. You're no longer intimate. 
Man, if you can't no longer get none of that poom poom or, or dude ain't willing to lay it down on you no more, it's over with. You know, as soon as you notice it, you should just go ahead and ask, yo, why 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 we ain't why we ain't doing the do, why we ain't fucking, why we ain't getting it in and doing the nasty, why we not doing none of this shit. You have to open open up that line of communication. Ask why. You know? And if you can't get a clear answer, then chances are your shit is over with. Number eight. You can imagine you or your spouse in other relationships. You don't even give a damn. Bye. See you later. Number nine, you want different things out of life. You know what? That, like I said, number nine can be solved if you are able to compromise. You know, y'all may want different things out of life, but if you're able to compromise and come to some type of mutual understanding and you all are mature about it, you can, you can solve number nine. Number, number 10, an affair is on your mind or you already did the nasty. I'm telling you, y'all be, be at work. You know, them plants, they, I'm going to tell you, the plant, I said it before, y'all work all them hours. Hey, COVID, man, COVID had motherfuckers stumped. They couldn't see their work husbands or wives. They had to be home with they, with, with the Reggies. You know, they got the, they got the one hit of quitter at work. Then they got to come home to the Reggies. Oh, man. Oh, man. All bad. Number 11, your goals don't include your spouse. Hey, that's just like living single. You jump up, go everywhere without your spouse. Hey, in your mind, everything that you're thinking about doing in life, it doesn't include your spouse one bit, none the least. Fuck them. And, and, and you, to, to them, to you, in your mind, they don't even exist. And number 12, you don't feel like yourself anymore. Whenever you get into a relationship, a relationship is not a, the moment. A relationship shouldn't be something that you lose yourself in and not be yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you hoop and you go to the gym, go to the gym. Keep doing that stuff. You may not do it as often. You may, you know, cut back a little bit, compromise. You know, if you're, if you're a woman that goes out a lot, you may want to cut, cut back some, you know, compromise. You may, you, your, your spouse may not want you to stop all the way, but it's like, damn, why don't you cut back some? So, you know, these 12, these 12 things right here is, is, is an indication that your shit over with. <laughs> Y'all unhappy. It ain't going to work, you know. So, hey, if you saw the video, man, like it, hit that button. If you hit the button because you liked it and you're not subscribed, subscribe. And if you liked it and you subscribe, share the content. And if you did all of those things and you haven't hit that notification bell, hit that notification bell so that anytime I drop some new content, you're alerted of it and we can just kick it, man. And if you have any questions, anything or whatnot, why don't you hit me up in the comment section down below and let's kick it. Let's dialogue. Let's, let's talk. You know what I'm saying? The community only gets better when we communicate. Thank you. Oh,